from verse, that's verse 12 to 15. The musician ran away. <laughs> String. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's read together. One, two, three, go. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And I want you to see something about the palm tree. The palm tree can survive all type of weather because it sends its roots very deep looking for water. Palm trees are found in deserts. You can plant palms in deserts. And if you go to Israel today, they are planting palms in deserts. Places where nothing works, a palm tree can survive. The Lord is saying, righteous people can survive everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. So, no matter how difficult the place may be, you will survive. But just as a palm tree struggle, I mean, makes it in days that makes it in difficult condition, child of God, you will survive in difficult condition. You were made with the genes of the most high. No matter how strong the temptation, how sometimes you may go through battles in your dreams, in, and the battles may be very intense. I have good news for you. You are a survivor. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter how rough, no matter how tough, God has made you for a time like this. And the Lord will use you to boast because you will survive. You will make it. You will triumph. The will of God is to make you to triumph. There, uh, there is no situation on earth that can overtake you. I announce to you, you are triumphant. You are a triumphant child of God. Hallelujah. You make it when the going is tough. You make it when it's easy. You make it when everything is going well. You make it when everything seems to be collapsing. Hallelujah. You are a survivor. A child of God has the genes of the most high God inside of him. You are not a normal human being. You are a supernatural human being. You have been infused with the power of God. You have been infused with the ability of God. So the ability of God sets you apart from every other person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So your things are not normal. Your things are supernatural. I repeat, your life is not a normal life. It's a supernatural life. You don't just go the normal pattern. You go the supernatural way. When things are falling apart in the world, you will stand strong. Hallelujah. I want you to stand up and tell the Lord, Father, thank you because I shall prevail. I want you to get ready to prevail in every circumstance. In the good times, in the bad times, you shall prevail. When, you, when the enemy wants to bring discouragement, you can tell the enemy, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Hallelujah. Say, I am the righteous. Listen, your righteousness is of him. Remember, your righteousness is not based on you. Christ has become your righteousness. So every child of God is righteous. Amen. Amen? Because the devil will come and lie to you and tell you, oh, you are not righteous. Oh, you think this thought. Oh, this or that. No, no. Reject the lies of the enemy. You are righteous. Tell, tell. I want you to proclaim that I am righteous. Because Christ, because the Lord Jesus has made, God has made me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. As long as I am in Christ, I am righteous. I walk in righteousness. When I stand before the enemy, I stand in the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. That's why demons tremble before you, not because of you, but because of him. Say with me, I'm righteous. And I want you to say it to yourself until your spirit man gets it. Because the devil will always tell you you are not. When you say you are righteous, the devil will remind you of some sin you, cons you committed in, in the ancients of this time. <laughs> so what you do is that you tell the devil, go to hell. I'm righteous. Hallelujah. And the enemy tells you you are not, say I'm righteous. 
shout with me i am righteous and everyone online proclaim it say i am righteous so the lord my god has made me righteous his my righteousness is of him and i thank you lord that i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus hallelujah glory be to god so therefore we have settled the fact that you are righteous amen some of you are looking at me as though you don't believe it you are because you are never righteous on your own power it, the bible says you have your righteousness is like what so give up your righteousness hold on his own <laughs> because yours is what filthy rags so give it up that's why you have nothing to boast about because it's you don't get righteous because of your ability you get righteous because of christ's ability in you it is he who walketh in you he is the one walking inside of you hallelujah so therefore you boast in him not in you you both were in him because he alone has made you righteous so you are righteous shout with me i am righteous say i walk in righteousness i live in righteousness i manifest righteousness i am holy because he has made me holy i am holy because the holy one lives inside of me if he accepts to live inside of me therefore he has accepted me he has made me holy hallelujah and i want to tell you a mystery god will not live in sin he has to make you holy to be able to live inside of you i think i'm changing your paradigm today hallelujah the holiness of god is inside of you this will make you bold before disease bold before the enemy bold before witchcraft Amen. you will flourish in spite of the devil Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. let's see, let's read aloud one two three go the righteous shall see read it aloud aloud one two three go the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in lebanon wow describe lebanon full of desert Mm -hmm. yet you grow like a cedar <laughs> hallelujah you will grow hallelujah the lord is saying you will grow if you fear to grow spiritually i have good news for you you will grow whether satan likes it or not you will grow amen. hallelujah amen. amen shout with me i am growing in the lord by the grace of god i will grow spiritually i am growing in him hallelujah glory be to god verse 13 let's read aloud verse 13 one two three go those who are planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of our god so the first is the righteous which god makes you righteous amen say so number one god's righteousness i have been made the righteousness of god in christ amen so the first is god god's righteousness you are righteous say with me i'm righteous the second is those who are planted in the house of the lord it means that you can survive as an island we need each other I don't come to church because you need me as your pastor i come because i need it i have to be here amen i need it without you i, I am in trouble yes. <laughs> we all need each other yes. hallelujah tell your neighbor i need you i need you my dear sister i need you <laughs> i need you I need you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell someone you need him. I need you, my dear. <laughs> to God be the glory. A 
It's not time to be showing lovey lovey to, to her husband. Tell other people, not their wife. We know you need your wife. <laughs> I need all of you, our brethren and friends and family online. You are precious. We need each other. Hallelujah. Karaba shanda daraba baraba kadaraba kasharaba rakadoroba kashara karoba kadaraba sharaba rakaroko rakadaraba shara karoba ka haraba shanda daraba boroko shiro basha rakadoroba shanda daraba kashara baka roko rakadaraba shara karoba ka hallelujah 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 amen so the first is your stand in Christ. Amen. The second is being part of the body of Christ. Yes. I have seen that people who separate themselves from the body die spiritually. It's a matter of time. You may think you are right. And you may even be right. You might have been hurt. But one thing is clear, separating yourself from the body, whether you are here or you are online, and you just choose to cut off from church, you will die spiritually. We need each other. Amen? Say, I need you, my brother. Tell your sister. Point at somebody. <laughs> Say, I need you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God bless you, my dear. I need you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I need you, Josiah. Even though you are busy there fixing that. <laughs> I need you very much. I need all of you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Remember, the cult of our God is the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Amen? You can sit down. The Bible says, those who dwell in the house, those who dwell in the courts. Yes. But the Bible also says that those who abide in in the presence of the Lord shall <laughs> what pa pardon they shall be overshadowed with what the shadow of the almighty Amen. Psalm 91. One. Uh, it's just verse 1. Can you put that verse? Then we come back to this. Just go to Psalm 91 verse 1. It's right there. Mm -hmm. It's right there. He that dwelleth. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. So listen carefully. The secret place of the Most High is the presence of God. It's the same like the courts of God. The courts of God describe the throne of the Most High. Because the throne of God is the highest court of the universe. And that court is said by the Most High God. Amen? Amen. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now let's go back to the verse we are looking at 91 verse 13. let's read aloud 92 verse 13 says those who are planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the court of our god now listen the court the house of the lord is the church of god Amen. but the bible says you don't just flourish in the house listen it says those who are planted in the house of the lord what will happen they shall flourish in the courts of our god it means if you are planted in the house of god 
you become a carrier of the presence of God. Yes. Yes. There is a certain presence you cannot manifest without dwelling in the house of the Lord. Those who are planted where? In the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Wow. And the court of our God is where? The presence of the Lord. The presence. It means when you are in the house of the Lord, something happens. You begin to carry with you the presence of God. Amen. It means you carry within you protection. Amen. Because the presence of God distinguishes you from the powers of darkness. Amen. The battle is not for the weak or for the strong. The battle is for those who carry the presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Victory is granted to men and women of the presence. Hallelujah. So it is the presence of God that makes the difference. It's the presence of God that makes the difference between you and someone who is struggling. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. That's why if you do not value God's presence as a corporate, you will suffer. If you do not value God's presence as a corporate body, you will suffer. Because there is some, you may pray for five hours, ten hours. There is some anointing God has kept for corporate. You will never, never, never succeed without the body. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord does that so that his church will be one. There are certain things that can only happen in the body. Yes. Amen. 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 Derek Prince explained a case. He was ministering deliverance to some people and the minister, minister and nothing happened. He prayed and he said, one day, the Lord told him, take them to the church. So he took this group, two of, there were two or three of them. He had prayed for months. Demons, they would just be stubborn. And he was shocked because he was gifted in the deliverance ministry. So he came and there was a church service and they prayed there. The people got delivered. Easily. He was shocked. <laughs> and the Lord told him their the, the greatest need of ministry had to come through corporate ministry. He discovered that there are some ministries that cannot be done as individuals. There are some ministries where the church must be involved. So the level of the demonic where those people were involved, they had to be ministered to corporately. Because in corporate anointing, there is increase of God's manifest presence. Amen. Hallelujah. God is making us to understand that you can't survive in an island. Even if you are so-called man of God. Are you getting it? Yes. Even if how anointed you are, we need each other. Yes. No matter how much you know the word, you need your brother, you need your sister. So I want you to settle that in your heart. Because God will allow you to come to a point in your life where you will need the body. Thank you, you got it. <laughs> when you discover that it's not, it's not walking alone. Those things, dreams and the rest are tormenting you in the night. All those battles and the rest. And the Lord will get you to come to the body to receive ministry. Amen. I have learned it through the hard way. That's why I vow never to miss church. No matter what. Tell your brother I need you. Say, I, I am 
I am in need of your ministry. Yes. Yes. And the enemy always. And let me say, let me share this with you. You remember Dinah? Who is Dinah? The daughter of. You know what the Bible says about her? The, uh, Jacob. What did she do? She left the family and went to Shechem. And what happened? <laughs> she left. There are certain protection that is found in the body. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, this is sweet. Say, tell your neighbor, this is sweet. I want to go to Acts to share this with you because I felt an anointing sharing these things. Somebody is being blessed here and online. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Because we have a mighty church online. We have our online audience is growing and will, it will soon explode because I want to announce to you that we'll be, start, we'll be starting a TV station. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. You'll hear more about it on Sunday, but we'll be starting a TV station. I want you to, need to hear that. So it will be great. It will be special. It will be 24 hour station. We will preach healing and deliverance because I have been delivered from the feeling that I have to deliver people just in the physical because i do not like online deliverance but of recent i've been ministering deliverance online to so, some people who are in africa and other places and it has been explosive i have been shocked by the manifest power of god it has surprised me myself so i asked the lord what is this the lord told me he is giving us the ability to disciple the world and to manifest the power of god i've come to conclusion that it is true that powerlessness is costly. Bill Johnson is the one who said that. So I give no excuse for powerlessness any longer. We will minister to people in different nations. And we will minister to them both physical and online. We cannot... I mean, we don't have all the time to just go, uh, to, um, to go and minister to them physically. Before we, before we reach the whole world, we will be gone. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Don't be distracted by the children. You need to hear this. Because you too will be, you'll be going out. Amen. Don't think you'll sit in the church here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I need you. I need you. Say it to your left and the right. I need you. Shout it, I need you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. So I want to go to um, the place where Barnabas and Paul were separated. Do you remember the... Okay, we'll get there. Okay. Just, just say, I look for me that vest. Yes, in Acts. But as, as we are getting there, let me, let me illustrate something. What I was trying to explain to you. We are carrying the gospel to the nations. And the Lord has been opening my eyes to the fact that... Um, what we are doing is great. Ministering to uh, people physically. We are going to Togo soon. We are expecting to minister there and meet members of the government. That's great. With Prophet Sadhu and uh, some other men of God joining us there. It will be glorious. And we are meet, meet, meeting at the Congress Hall of the Nation. So there will be ministers of government there. And they are arranging... Um, 
an encounter with the president of the nation. That's great. All that is great. We minister to him, minister, pray for them, and the rest, and the rest. But listen, that is not enough. That is not enough because you can only minister to the people you see and you meet. But if you find a way through the waves to minister to people you don't see, you can have unlimited audience. Amen. Amen? Amen. So therefore, time is too short. It is time to live as though it's your last time. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because in one year, next year, some of us will be 50. So it is important for you to start asking yourself, Asking yourself, what, what do I accomplish? What have I accomplished? Amen? Because it means 21 years is serious hard work. Before you get to 70, some people, I'm not calling names. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You have to plunge yourself like a mad person. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So therefore, we'll be launching the Miracle Channel. Amen. We shall minister healing, we shall minister deliverance. It will be a channel, not just preaching, but demonstration. Amen. The casting out of demons, healing the sick, setting captives free. Hallelujah. Amen. Command cancer to live and it leaves. God is increasing my faith seeing these things happen online. Amen. Ministering to people online and the demons are coming through Zoom. I'm, I've been shocked. It is as though it's happening physical. Yeah. People are getting healed, getting delivered. So by experiencing that, the Lord is telling me it is time to carry the power of God to the nations. And the days of superstar is over. So my goal is to train as many of you as possible to begin to do it. So some of you will become part of the TV channel. Amen. It's 24 hours. We must have the program. So I can just say, okay, Sister Elizabeth Mark, I need you to go and uh, 12 midnight minister to the world. Don't say, I'm not anointed enough. No, you are anointed. You can carry the corporate anointing that is here and launch and no demon will touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the corporate anointing covers you. Amen. Once you are under the corporate anointing, no witchcraft can touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. May God cause you to understand how anointed you are if you depend on the church. Because he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor God is good. Tell your neighbor God is good. Okay. So, Coming back to what I was, I was saying, the church of God is important. The body of Christ is important. So important that you can't survive without it. Amen? Amen? Amen. You remember the crisis Barnabas and Saul had? Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Read aloud. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Okay, that was not a bad suggestion. That was what? Good. Amen? Okay. 37. Let's go to 37. Now, Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. I want to tell you who, who Mark was. Mark was Barnabas' nephew. Are you getting me? Mark is Barnabas' sister's son. You get it? Barnabas' sister's son. So, Mark had a relationship with Barnabas. So, Barnabas was looking at a family affair here. 
He said, I'm taking Mark with me. But hear what Paul said. Paul was very Paul was very hard on Mark. And this is what he said. Continue verse 30. Let's read aloud. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the walk. Paul said, this guy left us. I'm not taking him. <laughs> See, this guy left us. I'm not taking him. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Barnabas, there are two aspects here. The, number one, Barnabas was wrong. But number two, Paul was also wrong. How was Barnabas wrong? Twice. Number one, the first is because, no, no, I'm coming to that. The first is Barnabas was more interested in John Mark because he was related to John Mark. It was a physical issue. Amen. The second mistake of Barnabas is this. We'll go to the third, which was the main one. The second mistake of Barnabas was the Bible used to say Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul. When Paul's, when Saul's name was changed to Paul, it became Paul and Barnabas. It means in spiritual leadership, Paul became ahead, even though Paul was younger in the Lord than Barnabas. Are you getting me? Because after some time of Barnabas and Saul, Barnabas and Saul, he switched to Paul and Barnabas because Paul had a greater call more than Barnabas. So Barnabas' call was linked to Paul. Paul was the one sent to the Gentiles, not Barnabas. Barnabas was to help him, even though Barnabas was an older believer. But who had a greater call? Paul. So the greater call comes before the age in the Lord. Amen. You may be older in the Lord, but the one who has a greater call, a God required you to submit to that, to that one because of the call and help him because of the call. The greater call pulls submission. Are you getting it? Yes. Amen. It's not because you are older in the Lord. It's who has the greater call. The greater call may just be somebody with five years in the Lord, but God has sent you to help that person. One of the reasons I respect Pastor Mark, the, who, who has gone with the Lord, Sister Betty, that's Mark Waddell, Sister Betty Waddell's husband, is that he was older in the Lord than me. Everything, uh, both of them can be my father, I mean my parents. But when I came to the United States, they met with me and told me, they said he, left, he was a pastor in a church. And the Lord told him to come and serve me. The day they were telling me I was crying. Yes, I was just 28. Some of you know the story like Elizabeth Mark was an ancient, <laughs> ancient part of this church. Founding member. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was even here before my dear wife. So she has a lot of authority in this church. <laughs> she was one of those founding members. So but Pastor Mark came. And said, uh, God has sent him to come and help me. The day he told me, I was shocked. He said, and I was younger in the Lord than him, younger in age, but he came and submitted to me. Because what? He saw the greater call. Are you getting it? The greater call of God sometimes will get older, mature people to submit to you. Not because you are too spiritual or anything because of God's call. Amen. Barnabas might have even been more mature in the Lord at the time, but the call of God was on Paul. He was the one called to the Gentiles since at his salvation. Barnabas was added to that call later on. When the Bible separated me, and Barnabas, for the work which I've called them. Are you getting it? So therefore, Barnabas failed to recognize that the Holy Spirit has shifted things. You must know when your friend that you grew up with has become the leader. Amen? You must know when your friend. I'm saying this to many people online who are following Many, when you miss it, you miss God's will and you may derail out of the will of God. 
you must understand where age is not the matter. The call is the matter. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you put aside your age and follow and God will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, these are the aspects. But now, Paul's case was what? Paul did not forgive John Mark. Why am I saying this? Later on, when Paul was writing, Paul said what? Send John Mark to me for he is profitable for the gospel. He finally discovered that John Mark was profitable. Amen. <laughs> Are you getting it? So compare scripture with scripture. He finally discovered that John Mark was profitable for the gospel. And he told him, send him with me. He's needed. Why? Because John Mark was lended and helped Paul to write. Amen. You're getting it? Yes. But this time, Paul was just angry that that guy left. <laughs> if somebody have left your church and come back, don't send the person away. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Forgive the person. Show mercy. He said, no, no, this guy, he left. I'm not going with him. So, if we have a, what? Pardon? He should have let him come. Just forgive him. Let the guy come. No, 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 no. Because sometimes we are hard when God is not hard. Yes, sometimes we are naturally hard. Angry that the person did that. Where people will fail you. But your attitude after that, God will either judge it or bless it. It's serious. People will fail you. But attitude matters. Because it is the attitude God will judge. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because always remember, you also have failed the Lord. But God has still forgiven you and trusted you. I repeat... Everyone sitting here have failed the Lord one way or the other. But you are still in the Lord. Amen. The Lord did not say, Sarah, because you failed me 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never follow me. <laughs> God doesn't do that. Amen. Amen. He doesn't. He forgives. He takes. He pulls. Hallelujah. He's a good God. So you have to be like you are God show mercy he said i will show mercy upon whom i will show mercy Amen. hallelujah Amen. glory be to god amen. amen now let's go to verse 39 let's read aloud one two three go then the contention became so sharp you see two believers disagreeing i pray it never happened to you in jesus name <laughs> the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus they separated from one another two people who were called to be in ministry separated because of a decision of should this man go with us I tell people, listen to something. This will help you in your leadership because all of you here are leaders. If you come for prayer meeting, you are the leader. Amen? Amen? Amen. Leaders come to pray. Because leaders are saying, I want to go higher. Amen. Because prayer takes you higher. Amen? Amen? So you are in leadership. And I want to say this to you. Pick your fight. Right. There are some fights that are not worth it. Amen? Amen? There are some fights that are not worth it. Let it go. Whether in marriage, whether in some... Don't just pick everything. Don't be the one that points finger at everything. You bring unnecessary contention. Certain things ignore. Amen? If these two people have just ignored this matter, it takes two to fight. <laughs> it takes two fight the major issues leave the minor issues alone ignore the minor issues hallelujah Amen. don't say i must speak my mind because no 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 calm down die to yourself in jesus name 
Hallelujah. You know what? I don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> That's how they speak. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that you get this message, each one of you. It will heal your relationship. It will protect your relationship now in time and in the future. Amen. Amen. Pick your fight. There are some battles are not worth it. Hallelujah. Sometimes my wife will say something, do something. Hallelujah. Oh God, should I say this? <clears throat> Don't worry. Don't say have the mic because soon she will have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said she has left the mind of battles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you clap for <laughs> Oh Lord. This is a low blow. This is not fair. Father, forgive her. So, I, so I'm saying, child of God, there are some battles that are not worth it. Hallelujah. <laughs> the other Elizabeth uh, is standing with a friend. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm saying, <laughs> are you listening? People of God. My wife may want, may say something or do something. There, there are times it's not necessary to respond. It will lead to another response and a minute thing can become big. Are you getting it? Pick your fight. There are some fights that are not worth it. They are not worth it. Ignore it. Die to self. You feel slighted by what she just said. It's okay. It kills you. It kills your flesh. You need your flesh to die for God to use you. Therefore, if you want God to use you, die. Amen? Ignore it. I have, my wife can tell you, I have grown since we got married. I have learned battles not to fight. I sense an anointing saying this thing, people. God is speaking to the church of the living God. Pick your fight. There are some fights that are not worth it. Hallelujah. And there are some fights that are worth it, but children of God, pick the fight that is worth it. Leave the many petty, petty fights alone. Die to yourself. Die to your pride. Hallelujah. And as you die, God will use you. Except a grain of seed falls down and dies. It abides alone. But when he dies, what happened? It brings forth much fruit. Hallelujah. That is the same thing. If you want to bring much fruit, you must die. Tell your neighbor, you must die. Tell your neighbor, both to the left, you must die. Say, you must die. Die to your pride. Die to your ways. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Pick your fight. So some battles are not worth it. I read a story of two people who were married for 29 years. A couple. They were playing table, table tennis. The wife just said, that is a good, that, that, that's a point. It touched. The husband said, it did not touch. And they started quarreling from there. From there, and you know what happened? They divorced the next month. From table tennis. Because one person will not let it go. Just let one person get the goal. Take it. You, will you die? You die to yourself, die to your pride. But it's okay. In Christ, we don't keep our pride. We let it die. Amen? In the world, you build your pride and you show the pride of life on in Christ. Christ alone. We build Christ alone. We don't build our pride. We build him. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he died so that those who live should henceforth not live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again. Hallelujah. True Christianity builds Jesus. Say with me, builds Jesus. Shouted it, it builds Jesus. Hallelujah. Pig your fight. Write this in your heart. There are battles which you have fought. 
and has led to disaster which you should never have fought them. It has led to unnecessary contention with the ones you love because you are petty. You look and pick fights for things that do not matter. What I'm giving you is both physical and prophetic. I'm speaking prophetically. The Lord is saying something. The contention was became so sharp. Remember, it was not based on scripture. It was not based on doctrine. Are you getting me? It was not based on scripture or doctrine. It was just based on simple thing about taking somebody or not taking somebody. You get it? And they clash so bad. These mighty warriors of apostles were separated forever. But there's something that happened that will surprise you. In verse 40, the Bible says what? Let's go to verse 40. Let's read. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. That's the difference. Who was commended by the brethren? Paul. Both of them were wrong. But one of them was backed by the church. From that day, Barnabas' name was taken off the New Testament. From that day, became Paul and Silas. The Holy Spirit took Barnabas forever. I'm saying... Because of the church. Because one person was backed by the church. One person took the side of the church or the church took the side of him. The Holy Spirit mentioned it there. But Paul chose Silas and departed being, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. The brethren came around Paul and Silas and blessed them. And the Holy Spirit moved. Both of them was, were wrong, but the Holy Spirit moved with the one that the church backed. From that day, the end of Barnabas, his name was taken off the New Testament. It became who? Paul and Silas. Just to tell you, child of God, it's so important for you to understand the place of the body. This will save you from a future headache when the devil tempts you against the body. Ministries have ended because of people's attitude towards the body. God doesn't have a perfect body, but he expects you to respect it. That's a word right there. So that you, that is. Are you getting it? Because God knows you very well that you yourself, you are not perfect. Are you getting it? The church has power. <laughs> the church has power. I want you to understand this mystery because the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church today, both here and online. We are all together, we are a body. And the Lord has told me to, to take the online church as part of us completely because He wants to move the whole to the whole world. And our TV channel will be touching the nations of the world. We will shake the world. Amen. Today, I got the letter, I got the information that the, the, um, the, uh, the, the land, the, uh, the owners of the land, the Church of the Nazarene, have also signed. I signed and they have signed. So we are in the process now of closing and both cl combination of closing and going through what they call zoning. Amen. It will take about two months or so. We trust God. There will be no appeal in the name of Jesus. And then we will own the property. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we will immediately move into building the property. 
and we will build a powerful TV station there. But we'll start it right here. So I wanted to Brother Felix and the other people to know we will start it right here. We will begin the TV station right here, but we'll, there it shall be expanded. We shall employ people. So some of you will be needed. Amen. We'll give you. Stephanie, we'll give you an offer you cannot refuse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stephanie is in Michigan. I'm saying, child of God, the body is important. Tell your neighbor the body is important. Say we need each other. Say we need each other. Say my brother, my sister, we need, I need you. Amen. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And in verse 41, the Bible says what? One, two, three, go. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Wow. It's child of God. You see the difference? One was backed by who? The church. From that day, the Holy Spirit shifted the focus to Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas till the end of, of the Bible. From that time, it was Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas. Till Revelation. <laughs> Revelation was John. So are you, are, you, are you understanding these things? It's so important for you to understand that you can be wrong but don't mess with God's church. Both of them were wrong. But one person chose the sight of the body and God backed him. Hallelujah. The body has authority. The body has authority because God gave his life for the body. That's what the scripture says. The Lord Paul told the brethren take care of God's church that he bought with his own blood. Take care of say with me God's church that he bought with his own blood. Hallelujah. That's why I am burdened for the church to move in the power of God. Amen. Say, I will move in the power of the Most High. Raise your hands and give God the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It did not say I will build my pastor <laughs> oh my this and the gate no 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 my church my church my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail the lord wants us to manifest humility to know that everything does not revolve around us we need each other amen we need each other. In the last days, the Lord is going to raise an army who are united and standing as one. Because the onslaught of darkness is coming very strong. Evil is prevailing in every area. But the church will be marching on with the anointing of Elijah. And they will be united to destroy Jezebel. The Jezebelic spirit shall be destroyed by the church of the living God. And it needs to be united to fight the prophet of Baal. Hallelujah. 
and to fight the prophet of Baal, you must be united. We must stand shoulder to shoulder. We must stand with one another because there will be temptation for you to separate yourself. And you will think you are right, but in the long run, you, there will be eternal damages. Like Barnabas, they were eternal damages. Somebody may hurt you, but Jesus did not hurt you. Amen? Even your pastor. I pray I never hurt you in Jesus' name. <laughs> hey, my dear. <laughs> I pray I never hurt you. But I'm saying even your pastor might hurt you. But one thing is that your pastor did not die for you. Jesus died for you. The church of the living God is the body of Christ. Nobody has the sole responsibility to, to uh, 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 I mean, the sole authority to send you out of the body. Amen? You are part of the body. Never, never, never act independently. Amen? You know what that means? You know what that means? Always think what I'm doing, how will it affect the body? Do you know that sin affects all of us? If you commit adultery, the Bible says that church is affected. Yes. Yes. If we are not affected, there's no reason for you to be sent out. You're getting me? That's why it is important for you to always think, what will happen to the body if I do this thing? Because you don't defile yourself, you defile the body. I was sharing with you the case of how I was ministering in the church. And I came to a point where, sorry, do not preach what I prepared today. If we preach another time, I prepare for a very good message today. But the Holy Spirit led another way. <laughs> Praise. <laughs> oh, I love you, Mishka. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I was ministering somewhere. I shared with you the story how the Lord told me the choir leader children the Lord said the choir leader was living in adultery the choir was now I asked the Lord first of all I was wondering what to do with that information <laughs> and the Lord told me because I, I, you know, I don't like to put people in open shame that's not my pattern. I don't want to disgrace people because I naturally love people. It's not the type that I just go and stay to you. You. I don't, no, I don't want to do that. I have suffered in it. I suffered. So I learned never to do it. If you have grown in the background we had, oh, rebuke. So one of the days they rebuked me for the whole service. Yes, I've gone through that. And I never left. I never i did not know what it means to leave the church because you were rebuked modern christianity need help <laughs> so now listen people of god i asked the lord what do i do with this information the choir leader i said father this is not my church i could have handled it <laughs> yeah the lord said no i want you to expose it because I've waited for her for two years to repent. And you know what God said? Every time she stands there and sings, she defies the church. This is serious. Every time she does what? In that adultery, she is transmitting adultery to the church. And people may begin to struggle not even in action but even in thought in their dreams because she's transferring the spirit i was shocked so i called her confronted her she was living in adultery with a drama not this drama in jesus name <laughs> and you know what happened the drama passed back back fled for his life 
went and called the pastor is adultery the only sin why was that man of god exposing it is that the only sin he was so angry <laughs> listen that's what i was telling my wife if you are here and you are having an area in your life you have not won if you are singing or playing and you are still in tight you know what you do you transfer that spirit to the church it's so important that the one who stands here to minister walks with God. Are you getting me? Because we don't release words, we release spirit. You produce your kind. You get what I'm saying? If you are holy, you transmit holiness. If you are sinful, you transmit sin. It is important that if you are living in sin, don't come to the stage. Amen? Are you getting it? Because the responsibility of the release of yourself, you minister yourself when you stand here. If you love God, you minister the love of God. If you are playing with sin, you minister the, you minister the same thing. That's why anyone who stands here, including my beloved who is playing right now, <laughs> must walk with God. If you have issues with your wife, forgive her before you play that in Jesus' name. Hope there are no issues. <laughs> She's smiling. I think I should ask her. <laughs> Amen. Don't come and sing when you are so angry with your husband. And then you are releasing anger for husband. Husbands are here. <laughs> you just find husband getting angry with your husbands <laughs> and with their wives. Why? Because you have released it. Amen? Child of God is the release of yourself. Ministry is the release of something of you. Amen? It is important you understand this. This will help you to respect the body of Christ. Fear God's body. Before you stand on this stage, be ready. You don't have to be perfect, but you don't have to live in active sin. Are you getting it? You don't have to be perfect because God uses you and he perfects you in the process. Amen. He alone perfects you. Hallelujah. Because there are things in you that he's still working at. But he needs to use you. Amen. And he will deal with those issues. And work with those issues. Hallelujah. But when you have an active act of sin. Deal with it before you get here. Number one. Active anger. Is there somebody you don't talk with? Before you stand here and make others to stop talking to people, <laughs> deal with it. Call that person, forgive the person, say, I love you. Don't come here, I love you, Lord. And then the devil is telling you, You love me, that you love God. How about Sister Casimo? You hate that sister so bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you getting, are you being blessed? Yes. As we conclude tonight, the body of Christ is important for the move of God in the last day. Yes. We need each other. We need your gifting. As we move into TV, we will need all of you, your gifting. All our church online, you are included. All of you. We need your gifting. We need your talent. We need your ability to help as we reach our world with the gospel of Jesus. We must carry this gospel to the nations and we need each one of you. Therefore, prepare yourself to be used by God. Make sure you have no nothing against your brother nothing against your sister love your brother love your sister be envious of no one amen if you hear that your sister bought a new car thank god for her 
I said, Lord, when will you give my own car? <laughs> Forget about your car. Thank God for your sister. Amen. Worship God for your sister. Say with me, I love Jesus. Shout it, I love Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Say, I love Jesus. So much. Amen. We are here to build each other, to build the body of Christ. Amen. The Bible says, consider others better than yourself. Building each other, strengthening each other. Hallelujah. I want to announce to you the miracles that will be happening here will be shocking. There will be extraordinary miracles. Lives will be changed forever. Stand up and give God the glory. Let's worship him as we come to the end. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. You remember the song, Elizabeth Mack, I think... You and my wife can sing it. I need you. Can we put it? Or, or, can you play music? Musician, can you play? <laughs> I need you. 